In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a scroller visual in your Power BI reports. I'm going to show you how to set it up from scratch and also how you can customize it to fit your branding and layout. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So I want to start by showing you a simple report here. We have some data on uh, orders table, which has information about products that have been ordered on specific dates, what products were ordered, the quantity of products ordered and the price of these products. We have a calendar table that we will use for our time intelligence measures. And at the moment, there is a relationship uh, just to uh, connect this calendar table to the order dates column in the orders table. So if we create a table right here in Power BI, and instead of dates, we will use the year. So we'll say don't summarize here. So now we have this table that gives us uh, the quantity and unit price for each of the products for each of the years. We can create a new measure here. And the measure that we will create is called total sales, which simply multiplies the quantity by unit price. So here we're going to create a sumx to the orders table and we're going to do a quantity multiplied by unit price. We hit enter and drag it into our table here. So you'll see it gives us the total sale value for each of those products. So now it's giving us the total sales for each of the products for each of the years. We want to just see the sales for each of the year for each of the product. And we're gonna add a filter here just for us to be able to select that uh, dynamically. I'm gonna add a filter, a list. So now this list, if we choose, let's say 1997, you'll see that it just gives us the product total sales for that year. Uh, so at the moment it's 1997. So that's why it's giving us just the total sales for the that year and then 1998, vice versa. So now from here, let's say what you want to do is for the year that you have selected, you want to see the percentage change between the year that you've selected compared to the previous year. Uh, so if you are selecting 1998, you wanna compare the total sales that you have here to the sales that happened in 1997. You wanna compare that and show the percentage change between the two. You don't just want to show the percentage change, you also want to show it in a scroller, similar to sort of financial dashboards. So first what we want to do is we want to create a measure that gets the total sales for last year in the context of what you've selected. So for example, we have selected 1998, we want to in the same line, uh, in a new measure, get the total sales for the previous year. And to do that is actually pretty simple. So we're going to create a new measure here. We're gonna name this one total sales last year. And we're gonna add a calculate function here. So we want to calculate total sales. And in our filter context, we want to use previous year. And here we wanna add dates, which will give us the total sales for whatever context you have, except give me previous years. So it sounds pretty simple, but let me show you how that looks like. So you'll see, there we go. So you'll see if we use this example, Alice Mutton, in the context of 1998, the sold total sales for this year is 8463, whereas last year it sold considerably more, so 19,000 pounds. and that is the total sales for 1997. Pay attention when I change the year. So if I change the year context to 1997, you'll see that now the total sales for 1997 is 19,000, exactly like what we have in the 1998. 
And now instead, this column is now showing the total sales for last year, in this case, 1996. So now that we've created the measure that gets the total sales for last year, now we need to create the measure that calculates the percentage change. So how much has the sales grown or decreased since last year? And the math part is pretty simple. From what I remember, it's total sales minus uh, the last year sales. And then the total of that needs to be divided by the last year sales. Uh, it sounds a little bit complicated, but I will just show you the, the formula. So we're gonna create a new measure once more. It will be the last one, I promise. And then I'm gonna name this one percentage change. So let's start by doing total sales minus total sales last year. So this uh, value or the, the result of this is what we'll use as a numerator to divide it with the total sales last year in order to get the percentage change. And to do that, I just cut it, put it in my clipboard. And instead of using a slash, we're gonna use divide just to safely divide our functions. So for the numerator, we want to do the total sales minus total sales last year. And then the denominator is total sales last year. And then alternate results will add zero, just so that if there is no value, or maybe it's not valid, we'll just make it zero instead. So if we hit enter, and let's drag that into our table here. So there we go. Maybe one last thing that uh, I need to change here is the uh, format of this percentage change because it's giving us decimals, which we don't want. We actually want to see the percentage change up or down. So there we go. So here, if we look at the product sale for 1997, we know that it's grown because last year they sold 7,300 pounds and now it's 19,000 pounds, which is 170% up and that's pretty much the hard part done so all we wanted to do was get first the total sales for the current context we want to get the category the dimension that we want to see which is the product and then lastly we want to get the measure of the percentage change that we want to show in the scroller so now let's add this scroller visual now the visual itself is a custom visual so you need to import it from the marketplace uh, so if you go on the visualizations pane over here and if it's not already here available for you, you want to go get more visuals uh, here, which will open the marketplace. Now, if you're not logged in uh, and you don't have a Power BI account, you won't be able to access it from here. So I suggest you create one. And if you have any problems, uh, because it requires you to have a work email, I have a video covering how to create your own without having a work email. So you have access to this marketplace. So if you're interested in how to do that, go check out that video. So anyway, here we're gonna type scroller. Let's look for this visual. So here is the visual itself, it's free. Um, so you see this is how it looks like um, and this is what we want to show in our report. So if we hit get now, that will import that visual into our Power BI desktop here. And it's that simple. So now we have the scroller visual that we can add in our Power BI report here. I'm just gonna move these to make some space. So now in this scroller, it asks for three things, which is what we've created already. So the category would be product, the product name, the measure absolutes. This is the total sales that you currently have in this context for the year. And then lastly, you want to add the measure deviation, which is uh, the percentage change that you want to show. We've selected just one product, so we'll just deselect that so that we can show everything that uh, we want to show. I can see there's something wrong with uh, the value here. So 51,000 with the decimals. So this is on the total sales measure. So let's change that quickly just to fix it. So under total sales, change the decimal points to two, force it to two instead of uh, just auto, and that fixes the issue. 
And that's it. So you've now implemented a scroller visual showing percentage changes for your products in your report. And what's great about this visual is that it's interactive. So it means at the moment it's showing the percentage change for the products from 1996 to 1997. However, for example, if we change this context to 1998, now it's showing us uh, that context or that percentage change now between 1997 and 1998. How cool is that? So now let's have a look at how we can customize this even further. So if we click on the visual itself and we go to the format uh, icon on the right hand side, under scroller you have a few different options for you to customize your scroller. So first you can auto size the font. So at uh, default it's off, um, but if it's on, the size of the font is based on how big or how small your visual is. So you'll see it's sort of, uh, it's big because of how big the visual is. But if you see if I make this a little bit smaller, uh, so you'll see if, yeah, you see if I make it a little bit smaller, you'll see that the font changes accordingly. You can uh, enable or disable the status indicators. So which is the arrows up and down that uh, you want to show the change. Uh, I prefer to keep it on. You can also disable the coloring on them. So if it's green or red, I, again, I prefer to keep that on. You can also toggle the text coloring itself. So if it's going up or down, you, it's gonna show either green or red. Sometimes I prefer this just because it highlights a little bit better if a specific product is going up or down. It's a lot more, uh, let's say, readable. You can also change the font size manually if you don't have the auto size font enabled. So you can control it here. You can also control the scroll speed of the scroller itself. So at the moment it's 1.2, but you can slow it down if you decrease this number or you can speed it up if you have a lot of items to scroll through. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to implement something like a scroller visual in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.